Hello everyone, I just wanted to share some thoughts on a situation that's been ongoing for a fairly long time, but it seems that it's recently received a lot more attention than before. I think partially because of Lindsay Shepard's coverage of it, but I guess I'm not exactly sure um, why it's become more of a topic recently. But it has to do with Jessica Yaniv. And for those of you who aren't aware, the, the it's a very complicated situation. There's a lot of things people comment on with Jessica Yaniv, who is um, basically a lol cow. So, of course, you know, you, you can look into that drama as far as you want. And, of course, there's plenty of um, very unsavory elements to it that I'm not going to be going into here. I'm just going to be talking about kind of the, the major um, instances surrounding it. So, Jessica Yaniv is a trans woman with male genitals who has been basically using anti-discrimination laws in order to twist beautician's arms into waxing her feminine ball sack. And of course, many people are very outraged by this. They think this is a, such a horrible thing. Now, to be very clear, I believe that it is wrong to compel a business to associate with you, to compel them to provide a service and to upon you know to to level legal threats against them you know that that if their reasoning isn't good enough then they're gonna have to deal with the law in some way i think this is absolutely ridiculous but with all that being said i will say that jessica yaniv's ball sack is the hero we deserve i think that because jessica yaniv has done this it has exposed in the most frivolous manner everything that is wrong with anti-discrimination laws. And I believe that that is really the only truly principled stance. It comes down to, do you believe anti-discrimination laws are justified or don't you? People will call themselves pragmatists and they'll say, oh, well, we like this rule in general, so it should be a law. And, you know, this is just an extreme circumstance. But, um, you know, this is why in many situations, principles are indeed superior. Because if we could go back into a time machine and all of the libertarians like myself would be making this argument that, you know, businesses should be allowed to refuse service. This is like a sacred right. This is a fundamental aspect of owning property and, and of not being a slave to others that for any reason you want, you can say, no, I don't want to do this. I don't consent to doing this. And... You can judge my reasoning for not doing it in whatever light you want, and you can freely expose it however you like, but the bottom line is you are not going to compel me, legally or otherwise, to provide this service against my will. And if you think about it, you know, if a business really doesn't want to serve you, there's no reason to want to give them money. Why are you forcing all of these awful discriminatory people, these awful transphobes and racists, why are you forcing them to do business well? Um, you know, as a member of my Discord pointed out, should not the, the weak fear the diverse, if diversity is truly our strength? And that, that's why I, I really appreciate what Jessica Yaniv has done, because if we could go into the past and have libertarians make this argument, no, no, trust us, you know, 50 years in the future, there's going to be a, a trans woman, which is, you know, someone who has, you know, a scrotum and testicles, but dresses like a woman and calls themselves a woman. They're going to go into waxing salons and they're going to demand that, that these women who work there um, wax his ball sack, um, even though it requires an entirely different method right than what they're normally doing for women in these like bikini waxes and things like that no 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 no. Like, like this is going to be something that's covered under your laws and your government is going to be backing up like using using public money in a lot of situations to defend this crazy person's right to force someone to wax their ball sack People would say that's insane. There's no universe in which that could ever happen. And, you know, that's why Clown World is a meme. Because we, we are in that that situation. And, and what, could, what could more thoroughly demonstrate that in a snapshot than Jessica Yaniv? So, 
I think it really speaks for itself. And, you know, I don't really see a way to defend keeping these anti-discrimination laws while somehow denying this. And it reminds me a lot of um, trans women who go into sports, particularly when they do fighting sports and they go into the ring and they just beat the crap out of biological women. Um, I fully support it. I 100% support it. If that's what it takes for people to understand how stupid the feminist movement is, then I say, okay, let's do it. Let's ruin women's sports. Because that's what it's going to take for people to start to care. It's going to take a trans woman forcing biological women to handle his nutsack and wax his balls and wax his scrotum and all around it. It's going to take that for people to start to question anti-discrimination laws. Um, now, of course, in, practically speaking, people are just going to find a way to have their cake and eat it too. You know, I understand that it's very... It's very hopeful to think that people will look at this and see this as a counterexample that disproves the overall general rule. Instead, they're just going to say, oh, well, this is just so ridiculous that we'll just carve out an exception here. You know, just like with the Equal Rights Amendment and the Hayden Rider, where they say, OK, we'll do this thing, but um, we, we can't have this ever be used in a way that will disadvantage women in any conceivable way, you know. But you know, ho ho I just want to throw that out there, that this does provide an opportunity for people to understand that the right to refuse service is extremely important, and that really, um, the, the, the unseen costs of this kind of legislation are massive. So, you know, I, I want there to be absolutely no question that I completely oppose everything that that goes towards these anti-discrimination laws and I resent the West for the fact that these sorts of anti-discrimination laws, which is basically the heart of the civil rights movement from the 60s, um, I completely reject that movement. I think it was absolutely despicably evil and I think the fact that our culture has placed this at the heart of that which is seen as virtuous and good. I, I see this as the, the real cause for all of the degradation in society. Because what we really need to do is take our capacity to make moral judgments and bring it back down to the decentralized individual level. And that's what allowing the right to refuse service, the right to discrimination is. And and you know the, the right to allow people to do things that may be immoral, but are not unethical, right? It, it's not, no, nobody is entitled to going to the IHOP, you know? It might be immoral for an IHOP to say, you know what, we've had so many fights of black people in my IHOP that it's just easier for us to run our business if we ban all the black people. You know, we get it. That's ugly, right? In the sense, it's immoral. It's guilt by association. And it's not something we'd prefer to see. And maybe if we believe it's realistic, we would prefer the IHOP that is open to people of all races, right? Um, and it, But then it, it becomes a question that goes down to the individual. Do you believe that such a rule is so practical that it becomes justified even when it's barring people for no good reason other than the fact that they happen to share, you know, a, a visual racial identity with other people um, to whom, you know, the law was designed to, to keep out, right? But, you know, the, that individualistic grounds, that, that, that element, that battlefield at the individual level where we get to vote with our walls and we get to, you know, really think about it on an individual level, you know, we, we don't avoid those questions when we just say, let's have a rule that says no one gets to discriminate. Because the basis for defending anti-discrimination laws in the face of Jessica Yaniv has become not a principled one, but a pragmatic one. And this kind of reveals um, a larger thing about the culture war that I've been wanting to comment on. I really hate it when people talk about this divide in the culture war as though it's a bad thing. 
The bottom line is that when you participate in democracy, when you sign on to government and you support certain policies, you are in fact supporting these at gunpoint. Now, when everyone seems united, it's redundant at best. Um, Molyneux has a very old video um, analyzing the welfare state. Um, it's analyzing a banana republic. And I think that the argument made in that video is a really powerful and, and really, really useful one. So I'll link it in my description here. But what I believe is that when you are engaging in democracy, there is an implicit violent conflict. To engage in and support democracy is, in fact, an act of aggression. Just as people say, you know, when you identify as a communist and then people joke about throwing you out of a helicopter, people say, oh, that's such a horrible thing. No, when you identified yourself as a communist or even as a socialist or a leftist, you know, when you do this in a society that already has a government apparatus in place that does things like socialist health care and controls the roads and puts government regulations on businesses and taxes its people, your support of big government is not an empty threat. It's something that's already there. The, the gun is already at your opponent's head, and you're saying, I'm okay with it being fired. That is aggression. The apparatus is in place. It, it is wrong to support that. So when people joke about throwing a communist out of a helicopter, these communists are going to act like they're weak and defenseless and have no power up until the moment that they do, in which case they're going to implement policies that make everyone starve to death. It's the bottom line. It's been proven historically, and it's not even just the case historically and pragmatically. It's a promise. It's a theoretical promise that's part of their belief about the way that the world works. So this conflict is implicit in all democracies. And when we have this illusion of everyone getting along, all it means is that the minority being crushed by democracy are drowned out or that hist history has been revised in such a way that th their voices were just erased and forgotten. When we see that conflict out in society, when we see that polarization and the rhetoric, what it is is it's a growing recognition of a conflict that truly is always there. It gets us closer to reality. So I support it. I do not want to see the left and the right come together ever. I want to see the right destroy the left forever. And I want to see the true right destroy the fake right. Because the leftist's greatest weapon is the fact that they will pretend to be right wing. And the sad reality is that the true right wing people are severely outnumbered. But I don't see any realistic solution to this problem that doesn't at least begin with recognizing the problem and recognizing the degree to which the right is horrifically outnumbered. But Jessica Yaniv is an important chapter in this because it gives us an opportunity to point out the fact that had we followed the principled libertarian solution early on, this would not be an issue. This would be something laughed up. This is something completely ridiculous. So when you see someone whinging about how ridiculous this Jessica Yaniv situation is, you have to tell them, this is what you deserve for supporting anti-discrimination laws. This is what you asked for. This is the necessary consequence of setting forth that rule. And it needs to be laid at their feet. It needs to be laid at their feet. They have to absolutely 100% take ownership of it. And if they refuse to, they better have a very compelling argument for how they're going to keep all of the aspects of this stupid rule that they like while getting rid of other ones. And, you know, when it comes to women, you know, of course, they're, they're, they're great at that. Um, and I mean men and women are great at defending rules that give special exemptions and privileges to women. Um, I hope it's going out of fashion, but... You know, that is a hope. So, you know, that, that that is what it is. It can't be what it's not. But um, people who vote 
they need to recognize that what they're doing has serious consequences. And what really irks me is when they shame those who choose not to engage in this process and say that, oh, well, that's tacit acceptance of whatever happens. No, it's not. It's, it's backwards. Just as you have clown worlds where people are forced to wax feminine ball sacks, you have a clown world where a person who does not participate in a system has therefore, by their inaction, endorsed and supported that system. And in a special way that those who vote have not, right? Somehow a person who throws away their vote on a third party, someone who participates in that process, they're, they're seen as somebody who's less having consented than a total non-voter, which is very backwards, extremely backwards. And it's the same argument leveled against anarcho-capitalists like myself when they say, well, you should forego all public services. No. I've stated it before on this channel, I'll state it again because I think I just, I can't say it enough times. People like me, people who are right-wing, people who do not want government involvement in all of these services and industries, who think that it's fundamentally immoral and fundamentally stupid, that it fails both pragmatic as well as principled grounds, we are not last entitled to these things, we are first entitled. If you promise everyone that you can have Medicare for all, or that you can have some sort of government enforced system of, of doing health care or of regulating businesses. You should also be willing to have your access to that take a back seat. You should be last entitled to it because you said that everyone was going to be better off. You said everyone's going to get free college. Everyone's going to get free health care. Everyone's going to get UBI. All right. All right. Fine. How about every single person who opposed you, every single person to the right of you, they get all of these stupid socialist communist benefits first, and you get whatever remains. That That's only fair. Of course, that's never going to be the way it's implemented, because it's all about theft. It's all about taking things at someone else's expense. It's all about generosity on someone else's dime. And that's why... All of these leftists, they will ensure you, they will say, all of the economists agree with me. They'll say, every single thing that I do and I support is totally going to work. Yet they won't say, if it fails, here's what I'm going to pay. No, 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 no. They, they, they want to make sure that they take that benefit. And when it fails, all they need is an excuse. That's it. And that's the fundamental difference between supporting government, quote unquote, investment and actually making a real economic investment in the economy on your own dime. And this is something that they don't put any value on. But um, when you have your own capital and you invest it, and that investment goes sour and you lose your investment, you pay the cost of that poor calculation, of, the, of that bad prediction. And this is why when your prediction turns out to be correct, you are rewarded for investing that capital. The socialist or communist mindset sees this as getting free money for doing nothing because they don't see the negative aspect of it where if this investment fails, then you're out that money. And this is because when they support their policies, they do not pony anything up. They have nothing to lose from it. So once you put things into the terms of actual economics and how things actually work, you see that it is all about violence. It is all about theft. It's all aggression. And that's why I support this growing cultural divide, because it's going to give us more opportunities to point out the fact that none of this stuff is free. There is no such thing as a free lunch. And... Uh, your free lunch of anti-discrimination laws has a cost, and that cost is waxing uh, Jessica Yaniv's ball sack. So, you know, if you're not waxing that ball sack, then just admit that the libertarians were right the entire time and that your entire philosophy is stupid. 
So, I think I've rambled long enough. Um, I hope all that hangs together in a way that makes sense. And, um, yeah, thanks for listening. Everybody have a nice day.